Genesis chapter 8, 9, 10 and 11. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth after 150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, other mountain peaks became visible. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had receded and it could find dry ground. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time, the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time, it did not come back. Noah was now 601 years old. On the first day of the new year, Ten and a half months after the flood began, the flood waters had almost dried up from the earth. Noah lifted back the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was drying. Two more months went by and at last the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Release all the animals, the birds, the livestock and the small animals that scurry along the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife and his sons and their wives left the boat and all of the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, all the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground and all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. But you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. And I will require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life. If a wild animal kills a person, it must die. And anyone who murders a fellow human must die. If anyone takes a human life, that person's life will also be taken by human hands. For God made human beings in his own image. Now be fruitful and multiply and repopulate the earth. Then God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will flood waters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Then God said, 
I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is the sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the flood waters destroy all earth. When I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember the eternal covenant between God and every living creature on earth. Then God said to Noah, Yes, this rainbow is a sign of the covenant I am confirming with all the creatures on earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the boat with their father were Shem, Ham and Japheth. Ham is the father of Canaan. From these three sons of Noah came all the people who now repopulate the earth. After the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard. One day he drank some wine he had made and he became drunk and lay naked inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so they would not see him naked. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned that Ham, his youngest son, had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. Then Noah said, May the Lord, the God of shame, be blessed and may Canaan be his servant. May God expand the territory of Japheth. May Japheth share the prosperity of shame and may Canaan be his servant. Noah lived another 350 years after the great flood. He lived 950 years and then he died. This is the account of the families of Shem, Ham and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. Many children were born to them after the great flood. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riftath and Togmahara. The descendants of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim and Rodanim. The descendants became the seafaring peoples that spread out to various lands, each identified by its own language, clan and national identity. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Sheba, Havila, Sapta, Rama and Septeka. The descendants of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia with the cities of Babylon, Erech, Akkad and Kalne. From there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh, Rehoboth Er and Kela, and Rezin, the great city located between Nineveh and Kela. Mizraim was the ancestor of Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Nephutatites and Petrushites, Kalshuhites and Kaftorites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvadites, Zemarites, and Hamathites. The Canaanite clans eventually spread out and the territory of Canaan extended from Sidon in the north of Gerar and Gaza in the south and east as far as Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim near Lasha.
These were the descendants of Ham, identified by clan, language, territory and national identity. Sons were also born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the descendants of Eber. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arphaxad, Lud and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Us, Hul, Gither and Mesh. Arphaxad was the father of Sheila and Sheila was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division. For during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Almodad, Shelepa, Hazar Mavet, Jera, Hadroa, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. The territory they occupied extended from Misha all the way to Sifar in the eastern mountains. These were the descendants of Shem, identified by clan, language, territory and national identity. These are the clans that descended from Noah's sons, arranged by nation according to their lines of descent. All the nations of the earth descended from these clans after the great flood. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they came, said, come. Let's build a great city for ourselves with a tar that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tar the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, He scattered them all over the world. This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. After the birth of Arphaxad, Shem lived another 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad was 35 years old, he became the father of Sheila. After the birth of Sheila, Arphaxad lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sheila was 30 years old, he became the father of Eber. After the birth of Eber, Sheila lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber was 34 years old, he became the father of Peleg. After the birth of Peleg, Eber lived another 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg was 30 years old, he became the father of Ryu. After the birth of Ryu, Peleg lived another 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ryu was 32 years old, he became the father of Sirag. After the birth of Sirag, Ryu lived another 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Sirag was 30 years old, he became the father of Nehor. After the birth of Nehor, Sirag lived another 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nehor was 29 years old, he became the father of Tera. After the birth of Tera, Nahor lived another 119 years and had other sons and daughters. After Tera was 70 years old, he became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran.
This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Milka and her sister Iska were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran.